The grounded Hawaii Aloha sailing vessel was salvaged last weekend from the nearshore bench off Kaupulehu. The boat tragically capsized on January 3rd. Four of the five boaters participating in a YWAM ship's Kona mission were found in a life raft and rescued by the fire department after they encountered severe weather at sea. 24-year-old Aaron Bremner was never found. The family is really at peace. He seemed to be very, very happy in his life's choices. Staff from the Department of Land and Natural Resources went to work on a salvage and wreckage removal plan for the Hawaii Aloha. Sea Engineering, Inc. was hired to remove the 75-foot-long, 84-ton cement vessel from the near shore bench. Yeah, I was, I was very pleased. Uh, sea Engineering did a, a good job and they did it quicker than, uh, <clears throat> they did it quicker than I thought they, they could do it. They did it quicker than they thought they could do it, so they did a good job. <clears throat> and their plan was to either, um, they had three, three phases, uh, lift and lift and or pull the vessel onto shore and uh, they described it as munching it up or just compacting it, putting it in a, a dump truck. If they couldn't reach it or if they couldn't drag it safely to shore, a uh, third plan was to lift it out with a chopper, but that wasn't necessary. Sea Engineering, Inc. carried out the task under a $150,000 contract from DLNR. The state absorbed the cost since the Hawaii Aloha did not have insurance covering wreck removal. This has prompted DLNR and their Boating and Ocean Recreation Division to institute a new policy, requiring vessels using temporary state moorings to show proof of adequate insurance coverage in the event of an accident or grounding. Meanwhile, a team from the DLNR Division of Aquatic Resources conducted an in-water assessment to see if the ship damaged the coral reef. You know, it's been a week or so since, since the grounding, so it gets a little difficult to work out here and look for fresh wounds, say, on corals or on, on hard rock and such. But uh, it's a bench area, so the good news is we wouldn't anticipate sort of catastrophic coral community damage. It's, uh, scattered meandrina heads, uh, not very dense, and uh, some little body here and there. Basic game plan today was just kind of do a, a more or less a recon and start working in from the area closest to the beach where we can access and then see if we can find if there's any sort of pathway leading out that would be described by some kind of damage or debris and such. Dr. Bill Walsh, the deal in our Division of Aquatic Resources biologist for West Hawaii, took part in the effort. All you're seeing is just a pink, little pink, little white to know that it's, you know, uh -huh. gone through. It's even hard. I mean, you can see it, but it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, something from the galley. <laughs> There's a lot. Of, I mean, obviously, the kitchen's great. There's, like, knives and forks and spoons, and there was a thing of pasta. And thing of pasta? Yeah, <laughs> Oh, bag of, bag of pasta. Anything that looked like medical stuff? No. no. Uh -huh. A lot of kitchen stuff. Pans. Ah, that's the legendary fish killer. Yeah. It's a practice ball. Hey, <laughs> Coral. <laughs> so are you going to work seaward from there and see if there's uh, you know, kind there's of a... There's nothing really to follow. Uh-huh. I mean, we're in pretty shallow and we're barely seeing... Okay, well that's good. But in the past, in situations like this, in these kinds of environments with groundings, we've been pleasantly surprised. Uh, the boats, particularly when they come in under unusual conditions, tend to not be catastrophically destroying coral reef and, uh, habitat. So uh, that's what we're hoping we find today as well.